Beverly Hills Blast Off. Just as Weezer intended. Yes. <laughs> Living in Beverly Hills. I don't know if you can see anything that remotely resembles Beverly Hills behind us, but that's where Alicia and I are today because, uh, in fact, we're like right out in front of the police station that's featured in Beverly Hills Cop. Nice. And uh, Taylor's holding it down back in his basement. What are you smoking in this basement, Taylor? I am smoking OG Haze from Raw Garden. And wow. some vape that I don't know what's in here. But. <laughs> I've got in my pocket a little bowl of uh, shake or, you know, ground up, ground up stuff from a grinder. And I don't remember the name of it. But uh, we're going to take hits from our very low-key peacemaker pipe. Okay. It's rubber. Yes, Tom Hiddleston approved. It is kind of Loki colored, actually. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. I've showed this off before, but the cap stays with it. It's so the nice. The cap's right there, so you just, oh shit, it's the Beverly Hills cops. Instead yeah. of that constant, where did I put the lid? Which pocket is it in? Which <laughs> hand? Which purse? <laughs> did I drop it? <laughs> did I swallow but it? But now you look for it and then finally realize that it's attached. <laughs> If you get high enough. Shout out to Puffco for that beautiful piece. Puffco and Peacemaker. We're making it happen. <coughs> <laughs> Woo! With the P Club. Um, there's no news this week to speak of. Am I right? I don't have any. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't have any news, then that means there's no news. Oh, okay. Maybe we can talk about that. Yeah, let's hear about animal news. Oh, first of all, uh, like as a tease, because we'll get to Taylor's theme park corner a little later, but... Uh, I have theme park. We have theme park stuff to talk about, too, I think. Yeah, yes. because we, uh, you know, we went into Disneyland... Uh, Last Wednesday, the day after uh, Taylor went, you know, we used the, the magic of uh, time and video to uh, make it look like we all went to Disneyland on the same day. Well, we did go to downtown Disney together. We went to downtown Disney. He went in the parks by himself, like he does. And we went in to... Uh, Salt and Straw. Salt and straw that day, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. that ice cream is so good. <laughs> okay, we can talk about this more later, but I have never been before. But right now they have Thanksgiving flavors, and they were insane. Like ones that straight up had like meat and stuffing in them, but they all they sounded incredible. Whoa. Also, I think Ben and Jerry's has a new Thanksgiving flavor that's like cranberry something something turkey weird stuffing. Yeah, the you guys like the cranberry uh, stuff. I don't really like it personally. My I one, have mixed feelings about it. I have a sister who's obsessed with, like, not just the cranberry, but the one specifically where you have to, like, shake it out of the can and it makes the gross, wet suctioning noise as it wiggles its way out. And then it flops and it's still the exact, exact same shape of the can. And it's, like, her favorite food in the world. No, it's cranberry jello. I don't, I'm not a fan. <laughs> and it goes wiggle, wiggle. Living in Beverly Hills. Wiggle, wiggle. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, yeah I'm not yeah that salt and straw does uh exclusive flavors that you can only get at that specific location that it's really good I think Disney like helps uh design whatever flavors they do there it's kind of cool yeah we went there right after we left you so it was like 11 a.m no lines because I think it probably gets a line at one point always and speaking of no lines we went to that place the Edelweiss food shack next to the Matterhorn uh, to get your beloved garlic uh, cheesy bread, pretzel bread, and um, no line at all. Nice. Every time we walked by it, there, was, there wasn't much of a line. It was shocking because, uh, you know, you told us, you warned us that it's a popular treat. And, yeah. uh, and it's fantastic. It was so good. We shared one and it was, uh, you know, pretty satisfying. We also, oh. I don't know if you noticed this when you were there, but the, like, 
winter food festival that's supposed to start November 10th, they already had a bunch of the stands set up and doing like, I guess a stop launch. Cause we were able to get tons of those food and drinks. That was really yeah. good. Yeah. I didn't know that they were soft launching it. They usually put the, the booze out pretty early. Um, so I saw those, but I was not aware that they were going to launch all the food, which is awesome. Actually. I'm excited to get some myself. We had the best, like a tiramisu boozy drink and like a really boozy milkshake. Also a really good mac and cheese that had like andouille sausage and some kind of like spicy crispy uh, business on the top. Loved it. It's always so good. I love their stuff there. <laughs> oh, did I pass it? Okay. There we go. <laughs> I was like, did I pass it to you? Oh no, you're passing it to me. Um, so yeah. So, uh, I mean, we just said more about theme parks later, but I don't know what else we have to talk about because I mean, we do have a couple other things we can talk about, but we we were at uh, the Magic Kingdom uh, on a very, uh, very busy day, as it turns out, you know, because the day you went, it wasn't too bad. But the day we went, it was it was so crowded. So mm -hmm. we had to use that genie thing to try to get on the rides. And we did pretty good, especially in the morning. Nice. But a thing that's never happened to me before happened during this uh particular i'm distracted because it's not like a bride that just walked by <laughs> hang on yeah, hang on hang on, hang on. <laughs> i saw her i saw her yeah can you see definitely <laughs> i think when people are getting married and stuff they do little photo sessions over at the beverly hills sign and huh. uh we will uh to show off how rich and fancy they are so we'll show you that uh Hopefully by the end of the episode, we'll walk over there. But uh, never happened to us before in our lives. The hallway part of Haunted Mansion, where you're walking to get into your Doom buggies, packed with people, and the ride comes to a complete halt. Uh. And so a voice would come on and go, you can leave if you want. They'd have, they'd have some uh, people that work there showing you uh, an exit. You could just ditch out the side but we waited it out it wasn't that long but it was still just a nightmarish fall of covid yeah that hallway <laughs> is always so crowded but luckily like the ride loads people so quickly that it usually empties out but also having to load any sort of uh like handicap accessible uh guests and stuff like that the ride stops all the time and so I never really thought about it, but you would think that you would get stuck in there all the time, at least for like five or 10 minutes here and there, or like just a few minutes. But yeah, I've never gotten stuck there either. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's what happens during the ride is, you know, when kids act up on the ride or like you're saying, somebody needs to be loaded in, they they stop and say playful spooks have interrupted our tour, which I always enjoy during the ride because it gives you more time to look at some of the more densely populated areas that have a lot of characters and so yeah definitely and they you know they all keep singing and talking like while you're uh, while you're stuck they don't all stop <laughs> i like it i like it especially i always yeah. get stuck in the madame leota room um yeah that's not one of the best rooms to get stuck in but yeah, uh, there's not a lot going on in that room no, just there's a lot of rhymes and the same shit just floating around and then when they switch it over for Nightmare Before Christmas, I don't know what's happening in that room. I don't know what we're supposed to glean. She's in an ornament. From what's happening. <laughs> you know, yeah. a lot of those, those cards are flipping around. Like, they just kind of cover up what was there with another thing that doesn't make much sense, you know? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Is I it time like to uh, say goodbye? Oh, so Wait, close. Bye. I sensed it. Uh, that it's almost time to say goodbye to our friends. Uh, that watch on YouTube for free uh, and make it exclusively Patreon for the rest of the episode. Uh, for my plugs, I'm just going to say go to douglasmovies.com. I've got some shows coming up in LA at the Dynasty Typewriter and the Improv that are going to be a lot of fun and then some stuff on the road in places like San Antonio and <laughs> New York City and Orlando. Nice. So we're gonna have a huge theme park corner. <laughs> we might even uh, tape our our part of the show from Orlando. Uh, yeah, that's coming up in January. Hell yeah. Uh, we got. I got. I found a hotel there that's got a nice balcony. So maybe we'll be able to shoot out on the balcony. 
Or maybe we'll do a parking lot episode, but without a car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you want to plug before we uh, jump over to Patreon? Uh, just check out my Instagram at Rizzo Rizzo. I got a bunch of stuff on there that'll link you to everything else. Be sure to check out the movie Megan. Is that what your shirt says? That's right. <laughs> One of my Is favorite Megan movies. Fan? I did really like this movie. I laughed so hard in the theaters. So you went out and like bought a shirt or it uh I so I went and saw the movie at City Walk and wait, save the story for a Patreon. It's a good great <laughs> cliffhanger. Alicia, anything you want to plug? Uh it's Alicia Glass. It's Alicia Instagram. Glass on That's Instagram. Right. That's all you need. Uh so thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>